So basically, I'm 22. I'm like, I'm working at Delta. And, you know, I'm the future for me, I'm going to school to take business. But at the time, I quit college. And the future for me was, I'm going to make $25 an hour. I'm going to top out of $25 an hour, which means I'm going to make $60,000 a year. But I can also make $80,000 with overtime. That was like the top. That's a big thing. That, 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 number one, that's a big thing. But number two... Yeah. You was working for Delta in Atlanta. You bruh, was I, like, bruh, that's, that's. Bruh, bruh. That's like, you could walk in any club and the <laughs> girl's gonna be you got a job. We could travel. Oh, that was it. Like I was, that was it. So I'm riding down the street. I grew up on Old National Highway. And this dude I went to school with flags me down. Like, stops me like, I mean like, pull over, pull over, pull over. I'm like, so I pull over and he's like, yo, I need you to come to my house tonight. What? Did like, you know this guy? I know him because I went to school with him, but we just saw each other in school. We we spoke to each other, but it wasn't like we were friends. He, he didn't have my phone number. It was like, we just went to school together. We'll say what's up to each other. So he flags me down. So he's like, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. So we, so he's like, so he's called, he called me every day for a month. Like, yo, come to my house tonight. Come but he would call me late at night, like 11 o'clock. And it was like, it was really weird to me because I'm like, Bro, like, why the hell is this dude calling me at night to come to his house? <laughs> like, I don't even know what he wants. And he's not telling me what he's wanting. He's being super cryptic. So my roommate, I was like, yo, can you take me to George's house? And he was like, yeah, yeah. I was like, bring your gun, because I don't know what the hell he wants. So he brings me to his house, and he's like, he's playing, he's playing the keys, and he's rapping, and he's singing. And he's like, since we've been in school, every time you spoke, people listened. And I'm quiet. If you could talk to people about what I'm doing, I think we can make a lot of money together. So I was like, fuck it, maybe this is, at the time I'm looking for something. At the time I'm searching for something. So at this moment, I'm like, shit, this is it. This is the moment for me. Like maybe this is what God want me to do. So I dived in head first and I was working a job and you know, I was trying to come up and I just, I just my because of how I grew up, I didn't fear, like making fun of me meant nothing to me. Like you could clown my sneakers, it don't bother me. You can you can clown my clothes, it don't bother me. It just, I mean, it, it didn't bother me because it, put like this, I'm not gonna say it didn't bother me, I was just numb to it. So I got made fun of for no reason. Mm -hmm. So imagine, so I don't mind getting made fun of if I'm trying to do something. Like, I don't mind you calling me a clown if I'm trying to go somewhere. I'm cool with that. So for me, it was just, it was like the music play, the music business was the first time I felt like I could do this. Okay, stop there for a second. Are you okay. still working this full-time job at Delta? Yeah. Yes. So let me tell you, yeah, so let me tell you what happened. So basically, I'm gonna tell you my first meeting. My father was alive at the time. And he was dating this lady whose ex-husband was a and r at Job Records. And the crazy part is that you don't even know I came up around you as a kid. I'm gonna tell you how. How my when I, when you, when I get to the story, you're gonna be like, "Wow, I used to be around you all the time." By the way, me all the time. Go ahead. I'm gonna tell you how. But so the first thing is that I'm working with this guy. So my 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 father's like, "Yo, Johnny May, her husband. His name Timmy Allen. He works for Job." So I'm like, can you set up a meeting? He's like, yeah, fly up. Like my father just wanted to see me fly up. So I flew up and I remember hanging out in my father building until Tim finally called and he would just, and then he wouldn't call and then he would call Johnny May and she'd be like, that motherfucker gonna answer the phone. I'm gonna call that motherfucker. You, Raymond's son is here in town. You need to have a fucking meeting with him. So I knew he, you know, I'm 22 at the time. I know this guy don't want to meet with me. Like, I know he don't want to meet with me. I'm, I'm cool with that by the way. So. So when I finally get the meeting, mind you, I worked at Delta. My days off is Tuesday and Wednesday. I will fly to New York. On, I flew to New York on a Monday night, and I stayed there till Wednesday pretty much before I got to leave to go home. So I remember flying to meet with him. We met. I walked in the house. Now, now this is how I know. This is when I knew I was good. So when I walk in the house, I'm 20. I think I'm 21 or 22. I walk in the house, and the first thing I realize is that he has friends in the room who are all trying to be in the music business. First thing hit my mind, like, he got his homies in here and they trying to come up too. Why the fuck would he help me come up? 
So now I come in the room like, yo, man, I got this artist. I'm thinking I'm going to play the music and he's going to give me a million dollars. Me not knowing shit about the business. I play the music. And when I play the music, he was like, yo, that's good. Your guy is good. Keep working at it. Now, mind you, I done flew up here. I'm sitting around all fucking day waiting to meet two days straight meet when the meet this dude. But let me just tell me that. So, you know, as I'm playing the music, his man's is like, you know how your friends are around. They don't give a fuck who you, what you doing. They're your friend. So I remember his man was like, yo, Timmy, I need to get this going. Yo, Timmy, I needed that going. And I'm just listening. I'm like, this nigga is not going to care about what I need to do. I need to make this man care. So he was like, all right, man, well, look, it was nice to meet you, man. You know, your father's a pretty good guy. And I guess he's making my ex-wife happy. Cool, whatever. So I'm like, cool. So I'm leaving out and I'm like, yeah, man, well, I appreciate you. I'm baiting him the whole time. I'm baiting this nigga. I'm like, all right, man, well, I'm about to leave, man. By the way, I heard you just bought a house in Atlanta because he just bought a mansion in the, in the A. And he uh -huh. was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I live in Atlanta. He's like, oh, okay, cool, man. Well, good to know. That didn't work. He didn't say, hit me when I get to Atlanta. So I'm like, this nigga. <laughs> so I was like, so I was like, yeah, man, well, I'm flying home today. I might leave at eight, might leave at nine. Caught him. He said, how you do that? I said, oh, I work for Delta. You, you think you can help me do that? I was like, hell yeah. He was like, and at that moment, him and his friends start competing over who got my phone number. Mind you, I was like, nigga, I can help all y'all fly. He was like, nah, nah, y'all don't need to holler at him. Nah, hey, he my little nigga now. You take care of me and my family. And if you take care of me and my family, then you take care of them. Get me and my family straight first. Of course, whatever you need. All I ask for in return is teach me when I'm going right or wrong. Just teach, mentor me. He was like, done. That was like my first intro. So after that, I got him, I got him passes. Like dog, for the first year and a half of me even trying to be in the music industry, I was known as the buddy pass man. Like, I remember talking to Jamie Foxx manager and him like, I gotta fly this girl somewhere. Buddy pass. I don't even, I never met this guy, by the way. I don't, he don't even, but Timmy just was sending everybody to me. Yo, I got a homie, he managed Jamie Foxx, he want to get your number. Okay, yo, I got a homie, he works at, he's the head of um, a and this company, he wants your phone number. Done. So I became the guy that got all the industry guys companion cards. Mm -hmm. I'm like the first guy that really started that. Like, I, I would charge you 1500 and all I would say to you is, hey man, just teach me what you teach me if I'm doing wrong, if I ever need advice. Nigga, hell yeah, just give me and hook me up. So I hooked everybody up. And then September 11th happens. So September 11th happens, and then Delta, the airline industry crashes down. So then Delta is like, we don't want employees to come to work anymore. Don't come to work, right? And then they was like, actually, we'll, we'll pay you if you leave. So I was like, well, shit, this must be my sign. Like, maybe this is the sign to go for something. So I remember I quit and I quit in 2000, I quit October, 2001. And then, but I took a year severance package because I remember I was like, well, shit, let me just give myself a year. Like I could hustle up rent money. Like this might be my chance. Plus I know all these guys in the music industry and they like me because they call me to get something done. I got it done. So I'm like, maybe this is my shot. Cause the way Delta set it up, you could quit, but you could still fly. So I'm like, this is my sign. So fast forward, March, 2000, March 3rd, 2002, my father dies. So what happened was, was Delta called me back to work like January. Like the airline industry is picking back up. We call in the year guys first, five year guys second, 10 year guys third, and the guys who just quit for good, they, we not calling them. So I'm a year guy, so they called me back two months later. And I was like, all right, so I, so I was like, yo, I can't work, my father's sick. My father had HIV. Mm -hmm. So I was like, my father's sick. So I used my father's HIV status to get time off. So Delta was like, all right, you're gonna get your full year, but that year is up, you gotta come to work. So I'm like, cool. So then my father dies March 3rd, 2002, two months later. Delta calls me. Sorry to hear that your father died, you know, cause they had to do a monthly check-in. Sorry, April called me, April 1st. Sorry to hear that your father died. You gotta come back to work. So I was like, fuck. So I'm already going, my father passed away. That was like the most traumatic thing that ever happened to me. He was like the nicest human being on, on the earth and he died. And now I'm going back to work. And I remember, dog, this was like the life changing moment for me. 
I just remember going back to work and I remember my mom telling me, you wasn't gonna make it anyway. Like you can't rap, you can't sing. You wasn't, you wasn't gonna make it. Like go to Delta, you're gonna make 60,000 a year in 10 years, you'll be good. Like that's what an adult does. So I remember for some reason, I'm, I'm, I'm back at Delta for like a month, a whole April into May. And I remember it just, for some reason, I don't know why this hit me. It was like, if Bill Cosby was my dad, would people expect me to work at Delta? That was like the wake up moment of my life. It was like, if Bill Cosby was my father, would people expect me to work for Delta? Cause if I work with Bill Cosby's son, the first thing I think is what the fuck are you doing at Delta? And then I was like, the bar set low for me. Woo! They, that's their expectations of me. Woo! Yeah. Oh, no, wait. I, I, I want to hear the rest of this, but I got to stop you here. Go ahead. I got to stop you here because somebody is watching this. Yeah. Somebody is listening to this on podcast form. Yeah. You had bigger dreams for yourself. You saw yourself, not where you were. Well, well, I, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you something. I can't even lie to you. I didn't have bigger dreams for myself because it still didn't seem like it was real. I just knew that I wasn't going to let what they wanted me to be become my life. Okay. I did not. Now, now me being honest with you, because I didn't even know I was going to be something. I, my dream was still like, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do with my life because... <laughs> But I'm not going to be a fucking Delta work. Y'all not going to tell me that Delta is my fucking thing. I didn't have a dream, though. I just really had a, I just really had, because I think a dream, you know where you want to be. No, I think I just no. a goal. I, I, okay. I disagree. I disagree. Okay, tell me. Because you, you did have a dream. You knew your, your existence was bigger than Delta. You knew that. That's true. I knew that. I, I No, I felt like, I felt like, I didn't know what my existence was, but I'm okay with it being lower than Delta or higher than Delta based on me, not necessarily, because I'm gonna tell you the funny story. So I go into, I go into, now this is real talk. This is how God works. I go into that moment, I'm driving on a tug cause I was the bag runner. When you land, you know, you're going from New York to Arizona and you got to fly through Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I was the guy that picked your bag up from the air, from the plane at New York and took it to Arizona plane. So I was on the tug and I went to the black guy. His name was Philip Pryor. He was my supervisor at the time. And I was like, I got a dream. And he was like, man. And it might, maybe for all I know, he didn't want to talk to me that day. I don't know what it was, but I was like, I got a dream. And I think that it's something out there that I, 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 could, I could do with myself. And he was like, how old are you, man? I said, I'm 22. He said, if you come back when you in five years, you'll be 27, and these people in the break room will still be here. Straight up. And he was like, I'm not gonna let you put in a two-week notice so you can think about it. Today's your last day. So he pushed me out the door. So it was one of those like, let me go talk to my superior, let me go talk to a, a more successful black man who's making 60,000 a year. And he was like, hey, look, man, today's your last day. You'll be back. If you come back in five years, these people will still be here. You just be five years behind, but you're going to work to get there. But today is your last day. I'm going to tell them that you put in your two-week notice. You're gone. Today's your last day. Well, damn, I didn't even get a chance to tell you what I could do. Well, he was like, go. He, nigga, get off the porch. And it was like, so that's what it was like. Because, you know, I'm like, I'm still kind of like thinking about it. But he really, like, I've been wanting to see him because he really don't know that he could have easily said to me, man, get out of my office. But he's like, today your last day. You, you're not, don't come here tomorrow. So, so can so, I inject, can I inject something here? Please, if you don't please. mind. <laughs> I didn't know this part of your story. And I think it's, you know, God don't make no mistakes, man. He just don't. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.